Hey gang, Scott here. In this video, we will take a look at Mask AI. This is a new masking feature that is in Luminar Neo. I think it came with the 1.0.7 update. So that if you don't see it in your toolkit, do an update on your Luminar Neo. It'll pull it in for you. And what Mask AI does is, you know, Skylum's thing, right? AI, it'll look at the photo, figure out the various objects that are in it, and allow you to create masks more rapidly. And the nice thing is you can continue to refine the mask after the AI has done like the, uh, the initial work for you. I'll show you how it works in this video. Uh, we'll use a couple of examples and I'll also show you where, you know, sometimes it, it, it misses a little bit to be expected. You know, the AI tools are good, not always perfect. And uh, so yeah, let's just get into it here. I'm a landscape photographer, so we'll work with some landscape images and I'll show you how Mask AI can help you out here. So I've done some some basic fundamental adjustments here in Neo and I've done my uh, my basic edits. I got my, my super contrast, I've done enhance, I've done structure, a handful of things here just to get the photo looking good. And now let's talk about what I might do next is I might want more detail on the tree. Man, that's my subject. I want that to pop more. Well, uh, I would go to details, right? I open this details up here and say, oh, I got my small details and I start working this. And these tools are already pretty smart, but it is adding detail to the ocean, to other areas. You know, if I do a before and after, you'll see that the ocean is getting a little, a little crisper. Well, in the masking area, you know, I've had brush and the gradients and I could go and try and paint this thing on there this new option, Mask AI. I'm gonna hit that and the AI goes off and just starts looking at your photo and it figures out the various objects that are in it. And this will vary from photo to photo, right? It took uh, as long as I was talking there and it found a few things, right? Now I've got these buttons. I've got sky, flora, water, natural ground. That's the stuff that it found in this photo. And for example, if I just click on sky, we can see, all right, there it is, sky. We know Luminar is good at finding skies. Uh, flora, that's probably my tree, right? You know, plants and trees and so forth. Okay, it did pretty good. Found some rocks, which is interesting. Uh, let's see, how did it do with water? Pretty good. And then natural ground. It found that same rock and a little bit of the foreground there. So. It did pretty well for the thing I'm interested in, the tree, uh, it did good. So I'm gonna choose that flora option. There's my mask. And now if I return to the masking area, I have my other tools. I can choose the brush, I can do erase, and uh, let me first open up my mask actions. I can show that mask so we can see what we're working with here. I'll erase and I can just take this away from that rock. I don't need that there. I'm not interested in adding detail to those areas. Okay, so I've just done that brushing there. And now all of my adjustments here, my small details, medium, large details, I could even sharpen, that is only applying to the tree. And the masking was pretty quick because I could use the AI. So now a couple of questions that, that jump up right away with those different buttons that showed up, sky and water and natural ground. You know, can you choose multiples? Yes, of course you can. You can choose multiple things. Um, let's, use a, let's use a different tool. Uh, let's say I wanted to do something with a glow. We'll go down here to, uh, to glow. I'll uh, add a whole bunch here. And you know, I kind of like what it's doing to the sky, to the water not so much the tree. I want the tree to stay sharp and you know, adding a soft glow to it is not helping. Uh, let's just let's push this a little far so we can see the results. Into the masking area, mask AI. Now the AI is much faster this time around because it's done this once, right? And I'll say, okay, um, I want this to apply to the sky as well as the water. All right, and you know, pretty good. I, I, I would not worry myself too much about the spaces around that tree for this kind of glow. And ultimately, I care about how things look. But if I had problems or I needed to resolve uh, little bits that were missing in the mask, I can go back and use my other tools. And now when I do a before and after on that glow, before, after, you know, my tree is staying nice and sharp and the rest of my scene is just getting a little bit softer. and. I can now, maybe I'll dial that back a little bit and not go so hard on, on the glow there. 
So this is fundamentally how Mask AI works. Choose it, it'll analyze your photo, find the different elements in it, and give you a little button that you can choose the elements. And you can add them up and choose different things. Uh, you still have all your other masking operations like inverting and so on and so forth. So you, you can combine these things pretty quickly. Uh, let's look at one other photo, uh, more of like a, an urban landscape, to see the, the different kinds of things that can be found in your image by the AI. Okay, just a simple blue hour street scene of a restaurant in the the, in the corner here, and uh, let's uh, let's see what we want to do to this. I, I do let's let's go to that details again. I want to add details here, so uh, let's just go straight into Mask AI and see what the AI discovers in this photo. You know, as it's analyzing it, I'm looking at it. I see, you know, I see a sky, I see buildings, I see cars, I see a street, and we'll see how this gets categorized by the AI. All right, we've got a, a few things. Um, water, that one's interesting. We'll get there in a second. Okay, so we got sky. Yep, we see that. Architecture. And not bad, not great. So here's an example where the tones of this particular photo, and it, it confused the AI a little bit. In the upper half of this main building here, it's got a significant blue cast to it, and I'm gonna guess that's what's confusing the AI or making it imperfect. Let's see, water. I don't know. It that that's that's interesting. That I'm I'm sure it has to do with the blue cast. So it's an example of where, all right, the AI didn't hit this one right. I, I know I'm gonna have to do some uh, some additional work here, especially like the architecture one. I would want to use that. Transport. How did we do on transport? Did very good on transport, found all those cars. Man-made ground, very good there as well. So man-made ground, and this is this is one thing that's this is a nice combination of your mask AI along with being able to use the same editing tool multiple times. Let's start with with detail and adding detail into the man-made ground here. So I'm going to push this a little heavy so we can see what's going on there. I'm pushing details, and that's applying to just the ground before and after. Really subtle. Let, let's zoom in here so we can. We can really see that, okay? So we'll get down here in this ground before those details, after those details. Okay, it's much more obvious when we're zoomed in there. Let's get back out to fit to screen. Say, okay, great, um, I, I like that. Um, let's say now I want to do something different with detail, like a different level of detail to the cars, for example. Now I have a couple of choices. I could go back into my masking area and say, let me add in the transport. So I get my mask there and okay, now I have this level of detail added to the cars. But if I wanted say a little less, well, I can take my masking brush and remove some, right? I can do that. I'm still uh, still in the, all the same tool here. I can erase and maybe at partial strength and kind of just sweep through there and you can see that red overlay is becoming less. Now, that's one approach that I have. Uh, let me reset the entire panel. Uh, go back into Mask AI and I had done this man-made ground work and we'll just push that up pretty far so we can see what's going on. All right, I'm happy with that. When I close that detail panel over in edits, there's my details that I did for the ground. I want to do something different with the cars. Back in the tools, I can open up details again. Masking, mask AI. This time I'll choose the transport and maybe I'll make those just a little more detailed. So I'm getting to the same result in multiple ways. In the second way here, I'm leveraging Mask AI to do that selection for me, find those objects and work on it. And uh, then I can just dial in the settings I want for it versus trying to uh, to do like uh, the, the, the mental calculations of, I added uh, this much detail to the ground, but I really want, you know, 38% of that on the, the other parts. And it, it's, uh, I, I find that the, using the Mask AI and having multiple entries like if I look my first details was the ground this one happens to be for the cars and so on down the line now if I wanted to do something to this main building um, let's say for the sake of argument 
we're going to do, uh, let's just say, uh, some additional structure to that building. And you're noticing this masking area. This is on you know, virtually all of the tools here. Uh, I would choose architecture. And it's more or less a, a miss on the, the top half of this. I've got to go back to my other tools. Let's turn on that mask. We can see it. Brush, paint, and start to uh, work things. Probably get my softness a little bit less. And I've got to go add this in here, right? There's, there's just no, no getting around it that I have to go do this level of work because the AI just didn't find everything in the buildings in this particular photo. Okay, I've got that, and I can now go to my adjustments, and I can pop structure on that, and give, give it a boost, punch it up however I'd like. And as I'm thinking about it, this might be a good option to use. Let's say mask options. I'll copy that mask and do something with, uh, let's say, color harmony, masking, mask actions, paste it, show it to me. And now I can work on, you know, uh, kind of adjusting that the color cast. And if I push this around a lot, you can see I'm just affecting the architecture, the building. So I'm able to copy and paste that mask that was created as well. Uh, you know, I can do any more color contrast that I might need to do. But, you know, using using some of the tools here to help combat their uh, that that color cast that's that's pretty strong. Uh, in that uh, in that in that building area there, so something to those lines before and after, leveraging the masks, copy paste. We can do all of those things after we've used Mask AI. Uh, and you know, I'm a landscape person, so uh, you know you, you can expect that if you're doing portraits, if you're doing wildlife, uh, you're doing you know flowers. We saw a little bit of that with the tree. You'll see other options in that Mask AI. You know faces, humans, uh, you know, the plants, animals, those sorts of things. Uh, so that's the tour of Mask AI. It will speed up your masking work in Luminar Neo, that's for sure. And there's some room for it to improve. I do expect, as we see these refreshes and updates to the software, the detection of the various objects will get better and better. And uh, that's great because we can spend less time manipulating the sliders and more time going out and making the next photo. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.